Oh yeah. Oh. With, with, and my granddaughter uh, is working at Pricewaterhouse. She got a master's in accounting. She's working at Pricewaterhouse. Oh really? But no one meet him. Speakers tonight are steeped in uh, this issue and the electoral college issue, and here we are, two weeks before the election, and it is more than any election in my lifetime. It is on our minds. So uh, welcome again. A great night, a very exciting night, and I turn it over to our panel. President Peter Metis, uh, as we say in Gaelic, Sihatitiria, which means <laughs> congratulations, and also the uh, FIRIC Center for uh, co-sponsoring, and the uh, Queens County Bar Association for uh, giving us the uh, CLE credits. Uh, as, as we've said, that we all know this has been a very unusual election. Um, and uh, I say that uh, because pretty much since 1912, uh, you know, elections have followed a particular pattern. We've had our personalities before, even in the 19th century, uh, but they've followed a pretty standard pattern. Bas you know, whoever won the, uh, the national vote, you know, won the ele electoral vote, and there wasn't much question about it. Implicate the Electoral Count Act of 1887, which we're going to discuss in more detail, but that's still our law today. Um, and so it's, uh, it's something to look at that we're under uh, a, a statute like that. Um, let me just talk uh, briefly about the, uh, uh, the, elect the Electoral College, uh, just in general. The way it works and the way it has worked, uh, as I said, pretty much since, uh, well, let's say the, the election of uh, 1916. Woodrow Wilson's second trip by uh, party in party conventions. Some states do it just the, you know, the executive committee or central committee of the party chooses them. Um, other states, it's a kind of a mini uh, primary that chooses the, the electors. The bottom line is uh, the electors aren't necessarily your next door neighbor. They are uh, persons who uh, are uh, done work for the party. Oftentimes, they're elected officials themselves. Uh, the only thing discourages voter turnout, limits campaigns and nominations to large states, and places an undue premium on the effects of fraud, accident, and other factors because of a state's electoral votes that may depend on only a few popular votes. Period, uh, six, uh, 66 to 79, a major effort was made uh, to abolish the Electoral College in favor of, of a system of direct popular election of the President and Vice President of the United States. The ABA-sponsored proposal passed the House of Representatives by an overwhelming vote in, in 1969, and that was because of, of, of what happened in the election of 68, where Wallace was trying to get enough electoral votes, as Nick pointed out, uh, to deny uh, Nixon and Humphrey a, a majority. And there was overwhelming support for direct popular election, uh, in the House, it went to a vote. It was a majority uh, in the Senate supporting it, maybe around, I, I, don't, I don't recall, it was around 60, but there was a filibuster that, uh, that prevented it from going, uh, going to the merits. It went to 